Welcome back. In this video, we're going to explore uh, scientific literature in rack, specifically long rack and light rack, uh, which are two state of the art frameworks. So these models uh, represent significant uh, strides in the field of NLPs and specifically rack, and they enhance how we retrieve and utilize knowledge to complex uh, queries. I'm going to break down their approaches, compare them with baselines, and we're going to see how they stack up in terms of performance and comprehensiveness. So let's deep dive. Let's start with an overview. So RAC systems aim to enhance um, LLMs by integrating external knowledge during response generation. Instead of relying purely on pre-trained data, RAG models retrieve relevant information from large data sets to deliver more contextually accurate and comprehensive answers. Therefore, traditional RAG systems have a pipeline involving a retrieval, potentially ranking, even though this one is optional, and then reading the information retrieved. So this is the context sites. And then these two improvements, long RAG and light RAG, offer new uh, mechanisms to address the key issues. And realistically, right? So we have RAG, which is retrieval and generation. And the generation, we have become very good at it with, you know, the GPTs, the Geminis, the Llamas of the world. The retrieval, this is where we need to improve. This is where the science lies. Because if you think about it, um, building a Google uh, quality search is very difficult, you know? Therefore, we kind of need to find small mechanisms that improve um, the way that we retrieve data. And this is what I want to show you. I'm going to start with the first one. This is extremely good. And why is it good? Because it's easy to implement. Let's kick it off. So the problem with traditional rags lies in how they handle retrieval. Most often, these systems use small units of information such as paragraphs that are only about 100 words long. This means that the retriever is forced to come through a massive corpus of search in looking for small needles, right? You're looking for a needle in a haystack, basically. And on their own, they may not provide enough context. And therefore, this is where long rack uh, comes in, a paper from 2024 by Xian Jiang, Okay, I apologize uh, for them, but the paper highlights the benefits of processing longer documents segments to retain context and improve the accuracy. And the way that it works is very simple, right? So we break it down in 4,000 token units, and this keeps most of the information intact. This is 3,000 words. Just so that you have in mind, so um, 3,000 words, um, this is how long it takes for you to speak. So it would take me 30 minutes, more or less, maybe 25, uh, to speak uh, 3,000 words. Therefore, it's quite a bit. So it's very, very long. And what happens is that this helps to preserve the context and avoid the loss of important details. Notably, the larger units uh, reduce the total number of segments, right? So we massively decrease um, how many we have. So for instance, it could decrease if we're talking about, you know, 100 words, um, and we go for 3000, it would reduce 22 million to 600,000. And this was uh, their baseline. And this is the comparison, right? So this is the traditional rack, we have a lot of chunks, we have the retrieval, um, this ranker part uh, is optional, um, and we have a reader. And with a long rack, we just have a long retrieval. And then we kind of let the LLM um, take care of it. Now, when it comes, like, just so that you have in mind, right, this is a very simple framework, right? So it's a simplistic approach, and it actually yields good uh, results, as I'll show you. So it's just, okay, um, instead of having, you know, a few tokens, I have a lot, so, you know, 4,000, it's a very, very significant amount. And what happens in terms of the uh, results, so long rag achieves inexact match um, in terms of this new K and output QA. Um, so these are benchmarks uh, to assess, you know, prompt engineering, you know, techniques. You can see that the 
long rack achieves um, 62.7 and 64.3 in the other one. And this matches the performance of other fully trained state-of-the-art models without any additional training. So long rack is a framework and this Atlas and uh, COS, um, they are actual uh, models that you can use. To provide a bit of context, so uh, NK or natural questions is a data set designed for open domain qu questions, um, answering, and then where the models must retrieve relevant information from a large corpus to answer questions accurately. And then the Hotpot QA is another popular data set that focuses on multi hop questions answering, requiring models to uh, gather information from multiple documents to generate a complete response. And this approach highlights how leveraging longer context not only improves the retrieval performance, but also results in fewer errors. And this is what we see. So that if we compare it here, right, so we have the normal rack. Um, so we have it here on the left, on the right it is missing. But if you just look at the one on the left, uh, you see that we have a significant improvement just by having these uh, long uh, retrievals. And this is how we, from here, we can see that these um, longer context, uh, they perform in both uh, data sets. So they nearly match, for instance, in the uh, first one, it matches the Atlas and just a few words on Atlas. Um, Atlas uh, here is a state-of-the-art RAG model uh, it's effective in you know retrieval and generation and is described in the literature by various researchers. It's a closed model, meaning it is not open source and is primarily available for use by researchers and organizations with access to proprietary tools. So this is not something that um, you and I could easily use. It is you know powerful, so if you have access to it, it's a good one, but very important, right? See how the long rack. Uh, is a very good one, and this is a very simple uh, technique. Now, I want to show you the uh, next one. So we're now going to talk about light rack. This offers a different uh, take on improving retrieval efficiency and response accuracy. It was uh, presented by Zirui Guo and Liang Hao Xia, and a few more, also from 2024. So their research uh, introduces graph-based retrieval for enhanced contextual understanding. So light rag addresses two common rag issues, so the flat data representation and the lack of interdependent knowledge structure. So light rag's solution is a graph-based retrieval uh, system. In other words, right, so we have seen when we're doing retrieval, right, so we just separate things. And maybe when we're doing the embedding, they start to come together, um, but this graph base is a new approach. And what happens here is that Light Rack uses an approach that visually connects related topics, much like a knowledge graph. This approach means that instead of flatly retrieving related paragraphs, it looks at how entities interconnect, resulting in a deeper understanding of the context, especially useful for complex data sets. To um, break down uh, this figure, um, I'm going to highlight five different things. Um, so the first one is here, this deduplication with this D dot. And what happens is that it deduplicates the data and this matches segments like beekeeper um, to ensure that redundant information is removed. So this step is crucial for reducing the volume of data and avoiding uh, repetitive uh, retrieval uh, operations, right? So have in mind, so we have several times here, uh, beekeeper, 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 beekeeper. And what happens is that we kind of need to remove what is duplicate. So this is the initial step. Then we have what is called the LM profiling. So this profiles the segmented data to generate the text key value pair that captures essential information. For instance, the segment on beekeeping might be summarized with a description, a beekeeper is a person who, this profiling helps um, in the efficient retrieval of related content. Then we have entity and relationship extraction. So we extract the entity, so beekeeper, bee, 
and their relationships, so observing B behavior. And these extracted entities and relationships are represented in the index A graph, which is here on the uh, right or in the middle here. So the extracted entities and relationships are used to create this index graph. The graph shows how different entities are connected and allowing the system to quickly identify related concepts and use them during the retrieval process. And then lastly, we have this dual level retrieval paradigm. So the light rag employs a dual level retrieval mechanism the low-level retrieval retrieves specific detailed information such as beekeeper, uh, honeybee. Meanwhile, the high-level retrieval focuses on broader topics like agriculture and environmental impact. And this combination ensures that both granular details and high-level context are captured effectively. Therefore, by constructing a graph-based um, representation of documents, LightRag is able to create a dual-level retrieval system, the low level that focuses on specific entities and details, and the high level that extracts overarching topics and relationships. And this graph-based system ensures that the responses are contextually rich and diverse, with the ability to capture complex interdependencies between topics. Now, let's have this comparative um, analysis with uh, LightRag. Uh, the performance is compared against several baselines. So we have naive rack. This is what um, the, we usually use, the simplest one. Um, IDE, or a height, I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, we have RQ rack, and we have graph rack. And we have four different data sets. Agriculture, um, we have CS, which is common sense, legal, and mix. And this is the overall win rates. Let me start by sharing um, each of uh, the comparisons. So we have naive rag. This is the standard baseline model uh, that segments raw text into chunks and stores them in a vector database. This is our standard rag. And then um, for queries, naive rag generates vector representations and retrieves chunks based on similarity scores. Then we have RQ rag. Um, it introduces the idea of query decomposition. Uh, this is something that we have not covered. And a complex query is broken into multiple subqueries by dividing the search into smaller, more manageable parts. RQRAG aims to improve the retrieval of relevant information. And this technique is especially helpful in multi-hop questions answering scenarios. Then we have this height. Okay, I'm going to go with height. It's hypothetical document enhancement. So it utilizes an LLM to generate hypothetical documents based on the input query. These generated documents are then used to find relevant information for the final response. Then we have graph rag. It is also a graph based way. So we build a graph with entities and their relationships. So this would be the most similar to light rag. And then from the table, we can see that light rag consistently outperforms other rag models across all data sets. Now let's focus on the key findings. In the uh, legal data set, light rag's comprehensiveness win rate is 80.95%. So against the naive rag and shows the ability to generate complete and meaningful responses. And then in terms of diversity, Light rag leads by large margins, especially in the data sets like Mix, where catching a wide range of perspectives is crucial. Now, this table shows an holistic view of how Light rag performs across different domains compared to other uh, rag models. Now, a few more key takeaways, and let me actually put this when it was bigger. Here we go. Uh, this is a few too many decimal cases, but have in mind that this comparison, right? So this is a win rate. So the sum of everything should always be 100%. And then underlined or underscored, uh, this would be when it wins. And then we see that for almost all the data sets, we have 
the light rag winning with the exception of the mix and this is very specific of the mix um where it still wins in diversity but overall it does not versus the graph rag so i would say that as a general conclusion right so the light rag is very good especially if you're specializing it in something if it is mix it still performs well but potentially this graph rag which was built by microsoft this would be the better uh, one now let me wrap this up with some key takeaways here we go um long rag focuses on reducing fragmentation by retrieving and processing larger more contextually complete documents there's results this results on improved accuracy and fewer retrievals needed. LightRack builds on the concept of graph structures for indexing, allowing a dual retrieval uh, process that captures both low-level details and a high-level context. And its ability to work with interdependent entities makes it useful. And then models like NaiveRag, ArcuRag, Height, GraphRag offers various retrieval and query decomposition strategies each addressing different aspects of the retrieval problem but light racks graph based dual level approach is superior on average now both systems have their unique strengths so long rack is an easy one to apply um light rack is not that simple right so it does require that you get to know uh, its library as a conclusion, so these advancements show how much we can push the limits into RAC and whether it's improving the efficiency of handling contextual information, these models present solutions that move the field forward. And as we continue to see developments in LLMs, RACs, AI agents, um, combining these frameworks can actually result in even more powerful applications for answering queries. Thank you all for joining. I know this was a long one, but hopefully it was value added. I'll see you in the next video.